Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla. Now, in my last tutorial review video, I did a simple, like, coloring of Sophie from Howl's Moving Castle using my new Arteza colored pencils. And I thought I would go ahead and use the same colored pencils. You don't exactly have to have Arteza's pencils, but you can have Cruella pencils or Crazy Art pencils, Prismacolor pencils, whatever you have. You can do this technique with colored pencils. It's a really nice clean way to color. It's a different way to approach it. You guys probably know this technique already. It's very simple and if you're struggling with working with colored pencils, this is how, this technique is how I used to color all my sketches when I was beginning to be an Instagram Disney artist. So this was the technique. This is all I used. I just had my colored pencils, my liner, and my pencil and sketchbook. This was it. So I'm gonna show you how to color in the simplest way I can possibly tell you with colored pencils. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to be using my Strathmore Bristol Board Smooth Surface Paper because uh, I've always liked that. It's always been my favorite kind of paper to use other than my sketchbook paper. I'm very picky about papers and Strathmore's always been one of my go-to brands. Kind of try to keep this in a 5x7 range because 5x7 is always a good size. And I always like to leave like the outsides just in case I go outside the dimensions I've already made, uh, which happens a lot because I draw very big. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch out. So I, I'm just going to use like the sumo grip. It was just a fun pencil to try out. It's a really dark lead. It's like a 0 0.9. And I'm going to go ahead and sketch out the image. And that's what you want to do first. You can use your call erase pencils or any pencil in general. Now I'm going to use my kneaded eraser. Now you know it's just kind of a gummy eraser and I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna start erasing and lightly erasing. The best way to use a kneaded eraser when you wanna lightly erase is you roll it up and you just kind of go over it. And you pick up as much of those lines as you can. You see how it kind of picks up, it's kind of like Silly Putty, that's why I really like it. It's just picking up all those graphite lines and making it nice and light. Now you don't need a kneaded eraser for this kind of stuff. You could just take your regular pink pearl eraser and you can go in and you can just lightly erase your lines. And you could do the exact same thing with a kneaded eraser. I could go in and lightly do that or I could just go around and pick up some stuff here and there. What I like to do next is I like to, I'm gonna use my new Arteza colored pencils that I was just given. And I'm gonna go ahead and maybe swatch out a few things. I like to swatch out to see what colors would look like, but when I start to line my pieces, so this is Sorcerer Mickey. Sorcerer Mickey has this red jacket, red robe, whatever his attire is, that's what's going on. But I like to take a darker color, so I have this really pretty wine red you see I swatched it out down here. And that's what I'm gonna use to go ahead and line all around his red robe, jacket, whatever this might be. Now, instead of using like a black or a gray, I'm gonna use a blue for Mickey's hands because usually he's wearing his white gloves. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna actually line with a blue instead of a gray or a black. I 
I'm even going to use more of a darker blue for Mickey's ears and his face. And that way, when I use my black, I'll actually like use it more as a shade, like a shadow color instead. If that makes sense, it'll make more sense when I actually show you guys. Now that I have my image completely lined with the colors that I want to line it with, darker colors, I'm going to take the rest of my kneaded eraser and go around and get rid of those extra pencil lines. And it should not erase your colored pencil lines, at least it shouldn't. It never does for me. I don't even think with a regular eraser. Like, let me even, I'll even use this eraser to see if it erases. So it really doesn't erase colored pencils that well. It's always so difficult. It might smudge them a little, but it doesn't go around that much. That's why the benefits of a kneaded eraser, I just like that it can go around and it picks up pencil lines that you don't want to keep around. So let's start with something easy. Let's start with the red. Now, when I color for red, I try to imagine where the shadows are. And I do something very, very simple. I go around and I use like a circular motion when I color. I don't know if you guys have seen any other of my colored pencils um, drawing videos or drawing tutorials, but when I color, I go in a circular motion so it looks like I'm going like this, back and forth, really close to each other. And when I do that, it just seems like my colored pencils really blend well together, like my actual sketch lines. So starting from here behind Nick Mickey's neck, go around here, and then I'm still going in a circular motion, I just change up the direction. So I go to where those lines are that I originally started, and then I lift up of my pencil. It's all about pressure when it comes to coloring with colored pencils with this simple technique. So I go where the actual lines are and make those nice and dark. And where the things are overlapping, like obviously back here, it's a lot darker. And it's darker back here too, behind his head and behind his shoulder. And then where the, I have to imagine where the light's hitting and where the shadows are. And when I get towards the front, so let's say we're going underneath this collar, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. And we're getting towards the front of his collar. I'm just gonna make this nice and light and I'm gonna lift up on my pencil. I'm gonna go underneath his face too, go underneath there. I'm gonna put this together, make this more of a darker color. And then for example, like back here where his arms are would make this nice and dark because it's being covered up. So I'm just gonna lightly go in there. Same for back here since it's dark. Let's actually go towards his stomach. So I'm gonna go alongside the front of him, make it a little lighter, and get closer to his robe rope. Bring that up. And since it's underneath his collar, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker, go underneath and darken that up. It's all about the pressure. I cannot exasperate if I'm using that word correctly. <laughs> It is all about the pressure of the pencil. So underneath his arm, totally want to make it darker underneath. And as we get towards the front of him, I'm going to make it lighter, lighter, lighter. So I'm going to make this nice and light up front. So you have to imagine where all the shading and shadows are going. So let's say like this is, obviously his hands are coming towards us. So maybe you can go around, you can map off, like for example, this is going to be dark and this is going to be dark. So it's gonna be underneath here. I'm just gonna go ahead and color this in. And you're gonna make it extra dark. And I'm pick the middle range right 
there. And I'm gonna leave it light on top of his arm. Same over here, I'm just gonna make it nice and dark underneath. And then through for the like the part of his robe, like that, I guess it's like the hem of it or whatever. I don't know exactly what part of it is. I'll make it nice and light going all the way around. And maybe underneath his hand, we make it nice and dark underneath his hand. So I'm gonna go around and finish coloring in his robe and I'll make this go a little bit slower than usual. That way you guys can see where I'm applying different pressures and where I'm going over certain things. So I'm gonna go ahead, jump into a time lapse. Now something I will do later on, this is why you want to keep all your color pencils still out on about like where you can see them. So the color that I used to line Mickey's robe with, so I have this original wine red and then I colored in his low, or the <laughs> his robe with a carmen red. I'm actually going to go in, like for example, let's jump to right here, and I always like to have more of a sharper tip. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll jump in here. And I will use that exact same dark red, the wine red, and I'll go underneath and I'll shade underneath here. It makes a nice dark red, and I'll even like go to where this shadow is here, where his arms are covering up the front of his belly. Once again, look for the shadows, like for example, back here, this would be where it's overlapping, so I'd make this part red. I'd make it nice and dark underneath his robe or behind his little knot that he has. So let's talk about like lighter shades now. Instead of shading, once again, with a black or a gray, I'm gonna use a lighter blue, and that's what I'm gonna shade with. One important tip is I always save skin colors for last because I don't know, I like to save skin colors for last because I don't wanna get like any like, you know, just smudges on it or anything if it's already done. So I like to save that for last. So if you're trying to figure it out, I'm usually, I usually stick to two colors per area but you can use three colors if you want. So for example, you know, I've got this dark, is it my cinnamon? Yes, so it's my cinnamon color. So if I wanted to go in, I can go in and shade here and shade underneath his foot, his heel. And I can take a lighter yellow Same process, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to color in Mickey's shorts. And since this is completely underneath his robe, I'm just gonna make it overall very, very dark and then grab that original Persian blue and shade in. Then we're 
we're gonna go ahead and jump up to this blue up here. And I'm actually going to use this pretty peacock blue. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna shade his hat. gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the storm gray to go ahead for example I'm gonna go on his legs and I'm gonna use this it kind of looks like a grayish bluish black so let's say I went ahead and I just colored in that leg now I'm gonna take my plain black and I'm gonna go right alongside that's facing his inner thigh. So I'm gonna go ahead and darken that up with a black. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And you could easily do this with your dark blue as well. And I can use that on his ears and show you the different ways that you can use black. So if you have a dark blue, you can do the exact same technique with a darker black pencil. Do the same thing over here. I'm gonna go to his inner thigh. So it looks like his, a little bit of light is reaching. All right, so let's say I take my Persian blue, let's do his ears. Then I'm gonna take my black and, you know, Mickey has like, a little bit of indentions going around his ear. I'm gonna go around his hat and maybe just lightly, lightly shade. The last step I want to do is the skin on Mickey's face. So I'm going to take my good old apricot color and when it comes to skin, just lightly go around, same concept.
And there you guys go. There is how to color in the most simplified, cleanest way with colored pencils. Now you don't have to have Arteza's pencils, but I just had them. I just got them and I love playing uh, around with my new toys, which are basically new art supplies. You can use this technique with any kind of colored pencils. Any like crazy art pencils or Crayola pencils or Prismacolor pencils, it's up to you. You can use whatever. This is just a fun, clean technique when it comes to coloring. I love coloring in this style. It's always nice and clean and it just gives you a chance to make everything pop a little bit more and play around with shading and highlighting. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you all later. Bye!